This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Catherine and I are delighted to have Adrian Young and Isabel Ibanez with us. Adrian is the New York Times and USA Today bestselling author of the Sky and Sea duology, the Fable series, and Spells for Forgetting. When she's not writing, you can find her on her yoga mat, on a walk in the woods, or planning her next travel adventure. She lives and writes in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Isabel is an award-winning designer and the author of Woven in Moonlight, included in Time's 100 Best Fantasy Books of All Time, written in Starlight and Together We Burn. Her designs have been sold by nationwide brands such as Anthropology, Crate and Barrel, and Paper Source in the form of greeting cards, notepads, and journals. So welcome. We are thrilled to have you here. We are discussing your new book, The Storyteller's Workbook. So super exciting. Um, Tell us first how you two met and how you came up with the idea for this book. Give us the origin story. Um, Adrian and I are actually really good friends, and we met quite by accident at a book festival where we were randomly put into the same writing retreat in a house on a beach in Charleston. Um, so we met there, uh, hit it off and we continued to talk and, um, we have a lot in common and, uh, we continued seeing each other at different festivals. And then we started flying out to see each other's events. Um, Adrian actually did my launch event of my debut book, Woven in Moonlight. She flew out. Yes, I did. I I <laughs> kind of forgot about that because it's been a while now. Yes, you flew out from California. It was actually um, you made me feel like it was my wedding day. I don't think I. <laughs> I don't actually ever think I told you this, um, but you, I remember very clearly when we were walking out to the car, you were like, okay, do you have your art prints? Do you have pens? Do you have your Sharpie? I was just like, I, I feel like I'm getting married. It was such a, it's such a process <laughs> to the car and get to the bookstore so that we can do our event together. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> super, super cool. Yeah. So That's friends for a while. We- so after after that, we kept in touch and became close friends. And um, Isabel is often my brainstorming partner. So I kind of was toying with the idea of doing a book like this. And Isabel had so many amazing, great ideas for it. And she has such a specific skill set for that kind of design and layout and illustration that I kind of was like, hey, I know we're both really busy, but maybe we could just like do this together. And our agents were on board. And so we just went for it. Hmm. That's awesome. One of the things that is so unusual and impressive about this book, I have to say it's really nice. Like the paper is heavy duty. It feels good. Mm -hmm in the hand and the pages, if you're getting this in audio and not on YouTube, I'm sorry, you can't see this, (laughs) but (laughs) the pages are (laughs) in color. Yeah. There's so many amazing design elements here. So tell us about that. I mean, why, why this format? Why not something more notebooky and yeah, Isabel with your design background. That's so cool. Give us that story. We are um, very particular when it comes to design, and I, I'm not going to speak for Adrian here, but I um, really notice when something is done with excellence. When I walk into a place, it doesn't matter if it's a coffee shop, if it's a bookstore, if it's you know whatever, and I pay attention to design and branding and aesthetic. Um, I feel very taken care of when all of those details are very intentional and thought through. And so particularly with the workbook, what appealed to me is that Adrienne had a lot of this content already that she had been building 
by herself and com- um, compiling all these different tools and tricks to be able to brainstorm and walk through that beginning process of coming up with a story idea and then turning it into a novel. Um, what I really loved, what excited me was to take all of this content and figure out a way to deliver it in a manner that was not going to be overwhelming, daunting, that somebody would come in and feel excited to to work on it. And so really each page is supposed to be kind of like bite-sized pieces of what you're supposed to do next. And it's not going to be one big block of paragraph. We're not going to do that. Um, but really every you know, every every page is going to be thoughtfully laid out so that you can be creative, think through your answer, um, and giving you space and time to to think about each bullet point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that- and Isabel, Isabel has so much knowledge about things that I don't when it comes to things like you mentioned, the paper. Um, like I'm very picky about that stuff, but I don't know anything about paper. And so is having Isabel was so wonderful because she was able to talk to the production, the art and design people, like at the publisher in ways where she was, she could really kind of quality control what materials were being used and all of that. So I, if she wasn't part of the project, I don't know if it would have come out the other side as well. Mm -hmm. So did you have this kind of um, a visual sense of it in mind, Adrian, before you invited Isabel to partner with you on this? Or what was that, that collaboration like? Some of the things I had a vision for and a lot of it, I didn't, I just had the content like, you know, um, ask a question here and let the writer answer or have a few paragraphs here for instruction. And so there were, there were a few things where I, you know, might've had an idea where I was like, I was thinking maybe kind of like this, but so much of it was Isabel just taking the content and then imagining the layout and then sending me a mock-up and being like, what about this? And I think because Isabel and I are good friends in real life, she she knows what I love too, and um, what kind of you know aesthetics I gravitate towards. So I feel like it was very synergetic in that way. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. you were using words like organic and earthy and fluid which painted a picture in my mind, but you were also already had a a feeling and tone for the workbook that made it very easy to, oh, okay, channel, channel what you're saying, these words, these adjectives and put it in visual form. It, um, so I had a lot of great direction from you is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) It was a good pairing. It was a good pairing. It it shows. It definitely shows. So Catherine was <laughs> super excited because this book hit our mailboxes just as she was starting to develop a new project. Mm-hmm. So what? Catherine, yeah. how did this talk first? Because we're on that topic about the aesthetic, like as mm-hmm. a user, really putting this book to good use. Yeah. How is it well, as, a, as the user? What it was interesting to me is, you know, there's a lot of different tools that you can use that are instruction. And then there are a lot of journals, right? But like having that combination was really nice to be able to feel like I had direction, just enough direction (laughs) to know kind of what the section was about, but not enough to overwhelm, right? Um, Which was really quite nice. And I, I like using pens. I like using colors. I like the fact that I can write all over it and it doesn't bleed through anything. That paper aspect is really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, um, I I love exploring new ways to journal. Um, I love making different layouts in my bullet journals, stuff like that. So h- coming to different pages and having different sections have different things, some dots, some lines, some note cards, some, you know, fill in the blank sections gave me the opportunity to kind of play with all those different aspects without having to leave one book. Right. So that was, that was really kind of fun for me to be able to, <laughs> to play around with it. And I will just, you know, it's, it's starting to get filled in. Um, oh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, 
I just want to show off a little bit because <laughs> I know, you know, seeing your work being used is probably, um, at least I would enjoy that. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, but yeah, um, it's just really kind of a fun, it was appealing to look at, appealing to flip through, appealing to read the little sections and then easy to get started, which um, I'm like fangirling, but that's kind of, it was, it was a very fun little approachable book to use. And since I have started using it, two other gals in my writing group have also picked it up to use it wow. and are also enjoying it. So it's, it's easy to share as well and hand to somebody and, and have them be like, Oh, cool. Like this fits for what I'm doing or um, I could use it right now, no matter kind of what section of life they were in. So, yeah. That's yeah. So it's been, it's been so fun to like see people posting online, how they're using it. And because we tried to make it, versatile there are sections that people are using in different ways which was the intention you know um so it's it is really cool to see all the pages like filled out and people actually interacting with the workbook mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm not the kind of person that's like visually gonna draw bubbles and like connect the dots or things like I know you guys have examples in here that are kind of it's neat to see you know different ways to use it um, but I'm very much like a lists and paragraphs person and so it works for that but I could also see how it would work the other way so it's kind of a nice melding of things <laughs> yeah you've invested countless hours in your manuscript now it's time to invest in yourself and your writing. Writing a novel takes time, a long time. And doesn't it seem like the less of it you have, the longer that novel takes? You end up cramming it into the free spaces in the early morning or that tired hour between work and dinner, whenever the rest of the world is quiet or at least less demanding, you can be found at your writing desk. But what if that just isn't enough? You've got a book to finish. Whatever your circumstances and motivation, if you are ready to prioritize your writing, group coaching for novelists is here for you. I will provide you the mentorship of an expert writing coach, the camaraderie of fellow writers, accountability, and an ongoing feedback loop as you work through your manuscript at an accelerated pace. Join a small select group of peers in our upcoming session starting in May. Go to wordessential.com slash fiction coaching to get all the details and set up your discovery call with me. I can't wait to talk about your writing journey. Well, that was our hope. Adrian and I, um, I think we are attracted to the same kind of story, but we approach mm -hmm the creating of a story in different ways. And um, she is very much a discovery writer. She mm. is a pantser and I am a plotter. So having these two different approaches to story, but trying to create a workbook that appealed to both of us was the goal because we knew that people were going to fall in the in-between or, mm -hmm. the, you know, she's on one end and I'm on the other. So I, it makes me happy to hear that you were able to use it the way that we were hoping that people would interact with it. Yeah. And what, what, what inspired the idea of kind of creating that hybrid between like, we want to get a little bit of instruction in here along with the workbook. Like wh where did that come from? Oh man, that was all Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very clearly because she kind of chafes under a lot of uh, rigid, like hard lines and, um, lots of instruction. She is somebody who likes to, I'm totally speaking for you, Adrian, but you like, <laughs> you, like follow, you like to fall up in the woods and I want to have a plan on how to get out of there. So, yes. <laughs> so, and um, for Adrian, it was important that people could, could have this workbook that they wouldn't feel so daunted by tutorial instruction, guidance, recommendations, suggestions. And I tend to favor those things, but having a light touch on both ends ends up making it a wider appeal to so many more people. And that way mm -hmm. that they have a lot of success with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a really big believer in the idea that we shouldn't all have the same process. We, you know, we all are very different and we're not only writing different kinds of stories, but our personalities are different. Our work styles are different. And so 
I, I have found, you know, when she says, says that I chafe under too much structure and instruction, that's so true because I want the freedom to, you know, follow my intuition and, um, you know, break the rules a little bit. So I think, you know, that coming from that perspective of we all work differently and we all should work differently. And there's so many materials out there that are telling writers like this is the way to do something. Mm -hmm. This is the correct way. Um, And, you know, those processes work for some writers and then they don't for others. And so it was a very big priority for both of us to make sure that it felt like, like the workbook was a very like accepting space, no matter what your process is. And we've often referred to it kind of more as like a playground because Mm -hmm. you can just go in there with your story and like play around and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you do need those little nudges and pushes in, you know, this direction or that, they're also there for you. Yeah. The what do I do next question doesn't occur because you just go to the next section. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, Along those lines, I was really interested in the fact that you guys also included revision and publication stuff in this. Like a lot of times you'll see workbooks like this that that don't go that far, right? They're just about brainstorming the idea or just about getting to the drafting stage. So why did you guys choose to continue that through revision and, and publication? Okay, well... I think that everybody is going to figure out their process, but my journey in writing was I actually majored in creative writing and I learned a lot in terms of writing the story, but um, I did not learn anything about the business side of publishing mm-hmm. and that came afterward. And I'm not saying, you know, this was this particular school and um so for me, I had to do a lot of that research on my own. And it did feel overwhelming because, you know, you look up something on the internet and there are pages and pages and you don't know what's right, what's not, what's going to work for me, what worked for another person. And so I really loved that we moved into that direction because it kind of takes out a lot of the question that or a lot of the questions that a writer might have once they finish that book, once they have revised that book. Okay, now what? What do I do with this? this story that I have spent so much time on and I don't know what, to, how do I sell it? Mm-hmm. So I love, I really, I really, lo- that's what probably one of my favorite components along with the revision part, which I, I love revising. Um, but to me, it felt like if we could, if we had the space, why not? Let's, let's include what we have learned, trial and error, all these different things. And we kind of put in best practices that have worked for us specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think too, I mean, so many of the questions I get from writers is about revision because there is a ton out there about, you know, story ideas, story structure, drafting. Um, And there is other, you know, there's revision tools out there as well, but I feel like it's very daunting and overwhelming and it just feels like such a big thing that you know, I think it's important, like, it's not just about writing the book. That's just one piece, like drafting it. That's, that's not a book, like it's a manuscript, right? But it can't get finished unless you revise it. And I think people need a lot of encouragement to kind of wade into those waters. And we went back and forth on the publication side of things, because we also know it's not everyone's goal to publish their work. Um, You know, they might be writing a book, but they aren't planning to get it traditionally published or they are, you know, wanting to do indie publishing. However, there's just, we, it's so hard to find things out there that do address this component that we felt like it would also make it more unique to, you know, have that aspect in the back of the book as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and it gives you a handy, like, this is this novel, and this is all the information about this novel that I have, right? You know, like, all in one spot, so you don't have to go searching through file folders or try to keep track in that in a different way. So that's handy. It's a cool idea. Like I said, it's just not something I see very often, so it's kind of a cool um, way of including that aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what would... 
you two say to the writer who thinks, but I can't draw. You've got map making and sketching and visual tools and lines of dots and such. And I think some of us wordsmiths can feel intimidated. You know, show us a lined blank page. We're fine. Show us a blank page and a sketchbook and we get a little nervous, a little imposter syndrome. So uh, what would you say to people who might hesitate around that aspect of creative process and using this workbook? Oh, I am 100% a believer that you do not have to be a good drawer to to (laughs) use this workbook. Like take the map, for example. You don't need to know how rivers work or whatever. You don't need to know um, specific things. You can just say forest here, town here, road here. It doesn't have to be precise. What it's meant to do is to give order to what's going on in your mind. Because, you know, you're thinking about so many different things while you are crafting a story. You're thinking about characters, dialogue, backstory, wounds, all these different things. And so the more you can put down on paper, the less you have to worry about it. And the less you have to, oh man, what was, where was the forest? Where was the town? How far are they traveling? All of that can be used. um, Like you can drop that into the blank pages and then it's there and you're not going to forget it. And then you don't have to clutter your mind with something that you've already thought through, you know what you're doing and you don't have to hold on to it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Have you been doing that, Catherine? We were just talking in a recent episode about how setting specific and setting um, is playing such a major role in in the story that you're developing with this workbook. So So I have not yet sketched anything out, but I will. I will have to because I'm getting there. But I'm one of those people, I probably fall a little more on the discovery writing side of those aspects. I have a really like well put together plot, but until I start writing, I don't see the stuff. (laughs) Um, And so character development and a little bit of world building and a lot of like setting details don't happen until I'm drafting. So I'm just starting the drafting process now. And actually just a couple of days ago, I was writing and um, I had this character that I didn't even have a name for yet. And he popped up on the page and then I proceeded to then fill in the entire character sketch um, (laughs) in the book (laughs) as I wrote the scene. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because otherwise I just didn't I just didn't care. Like I didn't know who he was. I knew what he needed to do and what he was there for, but I didn't know a lot of the details and as soon as he showed up on the page, um then I was able to fill that in. But prior to that, those questions just make me go uh. <laughs> So, um, so when I get to specific settings that are a little harder to hold in my head, I will definitely be utilizing those even though I am not visually good at like scale and all that good stuff. I'm just going to put it down there and my little stick figures and <laughs> you make it work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm like that too. I'm, I'm not, I don't consider myself, you know, good at drawing. Um, but for me, it's much more about reference, like being able mm-hmm. to, as I go in my story, being able to say like, wait, what was the name of that town? Mm -hmm. Or wait, they're going which way north? And I can like just flip to that spot. And normally I do it in my notebook and it's just a very bad drawing and I can update it as I go and make edits and all of that. But then at least there's some kind of, um, you know, reference point for keeping it all straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like blueprints of houses and things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which way was the door? How did I get from this bedroom to that bedroom? So things like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. So how did it work having a plotter and a pantser on the same project? Well, I am a pantser, but for this, I developed, you know, all of the content ahead of time. So it was like... I mean, I had it all pretty much. I I almost feel like Isabel, I haven't really thought about this before, but I also kind of feel like we switched roles a little bit because I did just because I, (laughs) just because I did a lot of planning on the front end and developing and collecting all the material that was going to go in the workbook and all the instruction 
Mm-hmm. And then you, you on the fly had to then go and like fly by the seat of your pants a little bit to like create each page. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It was <laughs> a different way to tackle an illustration project for sure, I guess. Um, which is funny. That is really funny because I have um, in the, my previous career, I was a greeting card designer. And so uh, a lot of things did not feel planned to me, which is I, I'm just now kind of realizing, yeah, I approached it the same way that I did with any other custom client or sitting down to design a greeting card. Yeah. No, so I mean, not a lot of plotting or planning. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I've never thought about that before, but yeah. I feel like we we just had a breakthrough. We did. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing that happened also while we were doing this was uh, <laughs> frequently Adrian would say something like, "Okay, but I don't want too much instruction or direction here." And I was like, "Okay, okay." And then I would feel uh started to panic a little bit at the blank spaces. And I think, I think I was like, okay, well, what if we did like something like this, or, um, this is how I would outline, for example, what if, and then that was the thing too, is that we started realizing how important examples would be. So we actually yes. did things that we had to use like a query letter, synopsis, a pitch, but how differently we presented, how they, how differently those looked in our individual notebooks. And that's what we ended up including. And so the way that we did it was that I just think that we, I was like, okay, if we're talking about outlining, what would this look like to you? And for Adrian, it's like bubbles and circles and, you know, that kind of thing. And for me, it was an outline, you know, A, B, C and all that, you know, all the different bullet points. But I think that's what we ended up doing. It was just, I would start to panic a little bit about the amount of <laughs> blank space. And then mm-hmm. Adrian, would be, okay, there's too much text. Okay. What can we do? <laughs> How can we pull back? <laughs> well, I think there's there's kind of a danger in trying to be too universal, right? Because you want you want there to be, you know, this is for a specific person who wants to have just enough guidance. They don't want a blank journal staring at them, right? But there's also that, you know, you want to appeal to a lot of people, a lot of writers, but also kind of narrow in on like, these are the people that we want, the people who want to be creative, but have a little bit of guidance, who need to be told kind of what that next step is, or want to be told, maybe, maybe they don't need to, but they want to have a little bit of direction. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that's how Isabel felt. She was like, if it were me, I would need more. So we had to find that balance. (laughs) Mm -hmm. have you thought about how the book would have turned out if it were just adrian's project or just isabel's project and you hadn't married the text and the design elements and the plotter and the pantser elements i think i would have overwhelmed everybody (laughs) (laughs) i I, yeah yeah. mine would have been too like woo woo like to just follow your intuition and you know, your feelings about everything. And then people would have read it and been like, I, I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> wow. Well, I love that you've got examples from your work. And so people who are plotters can come to this and people who are pantsers can come to this and feel like, oh, I get it. I see what's happening. And that makes sense to me. And that's how I would approach it. And or what I can take away from it, or, you know, that's really cool that both sides of that are in one place for people. Yeah. Yeah. We Mm. figured out that we had to have those examples because we were trying to put the instructions on use this space like this or like this. And it just was not conveyed very well. It was very hard um, to, I think, make people understand the potential of the space without actually showing them how we would use it. And, um, I think that was Isabel's idea actually to just put in our own, you know, Mm -hmm. as if we were pretending to use the workbook. Mm -hmm. I always like examples. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we talk about the first section of the workbook with the calendars and the <laughs> trackers. <laughs> yes, that's all Adrian. <laughs> Ask her about her planner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tell us about your planner, Adrian. 
I am not administrative or um, detail oriented. And that is a huge challenge for me. So my planner, my whole life is in my planner. I, it's the only way I get anything done. Um, and I really rely on it. I, it sits next to my computer open every single day. And I also get overwhelmed by putting all of my work stuff and my personal stuff in one place. Mm -hmm. So getting that bird's eye view of what is my plan for this project in the coming months is very difficult. So I can see that week what, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish, but you know, a book is such a huge hefty beast that it has to be like eaten in bites, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I liked the idea of, you know, not just having your actual research and outlines and brainstorming and development stuff all in one place, but also just being able to track your progress and plan how you're going to tackle it. Um, that is, that's huge for me. And I've developed my own system in my planner and also the use of a notebook. Um, and that's how I tackle projects, but I thought it was very important to have that in there. And also so that people can see how far they've come, you know, like when you start flipping through the calendar pages and you're like three months in and you can see like, oh my gosh, I remember when hitting 10,000 words seemed insurmountable. And now I just marked off my 40,000 word goal, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's so motivating. Yeah. And then the word, the, the tree forest, forest tracker, whatever you guys have going on here too, like visually to be able to see like, this is how many, like, this is how many hours I worked on outlining, oh, right? Oh, so fun. <laughs> you know, and I'm on drafting and I have just started. So, <laughs> but yeah, so I thought that was neat to be able to collect not just progress in terms of content, but progress in terms of time um, and tracking. Like, this is my January calendar. Oh, I'm just going to show people so that if you're new to seeing this and you know, you wow. can kind of see, um, awesome. I kept track of the books I was reading, you know, and the different things that I did on different days and the days I took off and things like that, um, which was very encouraging because February fell off the face of the planet for me to be able to look back and say, oh, yeah, but in January, like I was rocking and rolling and there's no reason March can't be the same. So I feel like. Um, it was an interesting thing for me to open it up and have calendars right in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I live and die by my planner as well. Um, <laughs> and to be able to separate it out into a project planner was kind of a cool idea. And my friend who immediately went out and bought her own copy um, filled in all of those with all of the like NaNoWriMo months, like April and July and which projects she was going to do and how many words she wanted to hit and all this stuff already. So she's got her whole year in that calendar section already, which again is a different aspect to planning your book that I don't think gets, you know, included in a lot of workbooks. So kind of just keeping it all in one space, which I find, I mean, is brilliant. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Again, I really enjoyed reading and using that. (laughs) We're both, we both are. Hmm. So is there a particular challenge that you were hoping to solve or that writers always come to you in, I mean, the whole book solves a problem or a challenge, obviously, but is there a particular section or chapter you said, oh, we have to include this because there's that problem I'm always tackling or students are always asking about, you know? I get asked a lot about revision, um, how to tackle it. Now that you've written the manuscript, what do you do with it? How do you how do you go about, cause it's, it's so big in your mind. It's, it's chapter on chapter on chapter on chapter. And then every scene on scene on scene, how do you break it open? How do you, how do you, how do you fix it? And um, for me, at least I, I have developed a process that was, um, that just worked for me personally uh, because I tend, I am not, I am also not detail oriented and I love to work with lists. And so dividing up the book uh, to me was really helpful in like big 
uh, big edits, medium edits, and little edits. And so I, to me, that helped organize my, the book in a certain way, and at least gave me a direction and a how to. So for me, um, I was really excited that we were including that revision process, because I know that as a writer, everybody has to revise. There is no getting away from it there. I mean, really, (laughs) (laughs) you you really cannot, there is nothing you can do or say or protest about to get out of revising. So um, I was really happy that we, that we included it. And there's so much more to it. There's also like a a revision checklist, like things that, things like that, that a lot of the mystery out of how to fix your book. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the one that I, that I thought of is that like polishing checklist, those types of things that I'm always, every project, I have to create those lists for myself and to just have them there ready to, you know, to kind of back me up. I, I was like, man, I would use that and just areas to make lists in general. Um, cause I'm a list person. So I, you know, if I don't have to have a list here, a list there, something I tore out of, you know, a notebook and then the back of an envelope somewhere and, you know, just to have it all together is so valuable. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Catherine, what's your favorite part <laughs> of the book so far? Well, I've only gone through like, I mean, I'm clearly I'm only in the first part. I have not yet started revising. Um, but, you know, I, I used part of the section. So the outlining section, all of the dot pages are are full. <laughs> I could have maybe used a couple more. Um, I had to write really tiny for parts of it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, but I took Can my outline... Mind? Yeah, I'm a journaler, so like I will write and 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 write. And write, and write. Um, so then I I took what I had outlined on the dot pages in just like journal form, and I went through and I seamed it out onto the cards, and just the process of flipping back and forth from what I had you know brainstormed and putting it onto the card section um, really allowed me to find anything that was not working properly before I got to the computer and started typing it up into my Scrivener (laughs) um, and putting them on the cards. So it was a good, uh, you know, affirmation of like, I could have used either one, right? I could use the dot pages or the note cards to outline, but I chose to use both. And in doing that, I kind of like multiplied my touchstones of my, you know, what is going on in, in this plot and is it working because the cards don't have nearly as much room to write so I had to boil it down to like no this is the most important thing that's happening here um and to be able to do that and look at at it you know more clearly like here's the entirety of act one you know on two pages it was very good for me visually to see that and to be able to read through it in you know a second to be able to double check that so that was it was cool to have multiple tools in the one section, right? So I had not only dot pages, but I also had the note cards. And then I also used the brainstorming pages in the back with the lines to work out other things. So yeah, multiple tools for the same process (laughs) works really well for me. So that was my favorite part so far. We'll see when I get to revision. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are advocating really strong for that. So I'm excited to get there. (laughs) Because you have to do it. (laughs) I did read through the entire book before I started using it just to kind of like, I mean, obviously there's not a ton of text, so you can just read all of the instruction bits. And I really like the, the concepts behind it. So I can't wait to get there and see how that works for me and, and my process. So, and then, um, all of the like title worksheets and synopsis worksheets and things like that, things that I never even would have thought to like sit and really work through to this level of detail. Um, I'm excited to get there as well. So yeah. Yeah. So what else would you like our listeners to hear about the book or your journey, or you can ask Catherine something as, (laughs) as an (laughs) avid user of the book? I have one thing. Um, I'm always excited to point out or talk about or mention the stickers. Yes. Very end. They're probably my favorite part of, I mean, I've been saying that about every little thing. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the stickers. You no, know, gosh, I, I was a sticker person when I was a kid. 
So there's that. Um, (laughs) and, uh, I don't know the, to me, they, they're a fun way to play. They're Mm -hmm. a fun way to reward yourself. You know, we, I, at least for me, I'm a three on the Enneagram, um, evidently. And I really loved earning that gold star in class. And so whenever, um, I hit a milestone or do something, it's really nice to just put a sticker on it. And then I can look back and just feel proud of myself over and over again, whenever I see the little sticker or whatever it is. Um, and we got to be really playful with the designs of the stickers. There's, um, sneakers on there for word sprints. And so if you're planning on doing a word sprint with a friend or just yourself, um, you could absolutely mark that down in your calendar. Hey, this is when I'm going to be doing this type of drafting, for example, and you know that it's coming and Hey, you may not feel too bad about it because you got, you got to use the sticker. That is, yeah, I love, I love the stickers. I feel like they just feel like a little treat. Um, I also love the reward aspect and someone messaged me the other day and said that they had their partner, uh, choose like a surprise, like gift reward type thing for them. So they don't even know what it is, but it's in an envelope. Um, and they get to open it and get surprised when they reach their goal. So I thought that was a different way to approach the reward at the end of the book. Um, for those who've never seen the workbook, there's just a little thing at the end that's like, you know, dangle a carrot in front of yourself, basically like what, what are you going to do or what, how are you going to celebrate, um, when you hit this goal or that goal? And I, I find that stuff motivating too, because it's so important to celebrate those wins when there's just so much work ahead of you. Um, so I've seen people breaking those up into like multiple stage awards. And then, you know, some people, they just have one big award at the end, like a pair of shoes they've been wanting to buy for two years, you know, (laughs) or it could be, or it could be like, I'm finally going to buy that work, that writer's workshop. I'm finally going to, you know, go on that retreat and that's going to be my reward when I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's really cool that you included that because I think Sometimes we need permission to reward ourselves and to take care of ourselves. And it's so easy to get to the end of a project and a book is a massive project and then be like, okay, now what, you know, (laughs) all right, now what should I write now instead of stopping to actually celebrate? Very cool. Catherine, have you set your reward yet? No, (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a very, you see, I'm not as motivated by rewards. I'm much more of the, if I want it, I'll get it. Person. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I'll probably do something like, um, you know, tell my husband he has to take me to dinner or something, <laughs> but it'll be after it's already complete. I'll be like, I have to share with you. <laughs> take me on a date. <laughs> well, very cool. Well, this is such an impressive workbook just from the quality of the paper to how much there is to work with. And the, mm-hmm. you know, just from like A to Z, it's a very impressive book. And as Catherine has told us, it works, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's fun. So where can our listeners find you to? Uh, where can we find you? Oh, I was waiting for you. Oh, sorry. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You to go. Um, you can mostly find me on Instagram at Isabel Writer W R I T E R zero nine, um, or at IsabelIbanez dot com. Yes, and um, Instagram is also my platform. I am. It's really the only space online I am actually, you know, really active. Uh, my handle is Adrian Young Books, and my website is adrianyoungbooks.com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We will, of course, have links in the show notes at storyworkspodcast.com as well. So if you didn't catch anything, just go to the usual uh, podcast page and we will link you up with Adrian and Isabel. So <laughs> thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. 
Thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com.